welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Back with our special guest, Phil Haney, founding member of the Department of Homeland Security, international terrorism expert, intelligence officer, and extremely knowledgeable when it comes to protecting the homeland, especially regarding Muslim jihadi influences within the United States. Phil, welcome back. Thank you very much. So we have talked about in a number of episodes, the shocking information that you went public with uh, some months ago about letters signed by members of Congress, both parties, both houses, supporting CARE. Now, before we get into what the letters have said and who signed it, real quick for our audience that doesn't know, tell us about CARE and their links to, well, the unsavory elements of people like uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and other front groups uh, that support terror around the world. The Council on American Islamic Relations, the acronym is CARE. We'll go back to the year 2008. We're proven irrefutably in federal court in Dallas, Texas. It's known as the Holy Land Foundation trial to be linked to Hamas through a network of mosques and organizations, virtually all front groups for the Muslim Brotherhood, who raised anywhere between 12 and $60 million and sent it over to the Middle East to support Hamas. That was in November of 2008 when the verdict came out. And none of that evidence in court has been disproven up to this very day. Now we're 12 years later. But what has also been added to that corpus of information is the fact that we now know that the Muslim Brotherhood is closely uh, and formally allied with the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. And I brought that up because so many times we've talked about designating the Muslim Brotherhood in America as a terrorist group because of their ties to Hamas, which would be a legitimate reason. But now we have a second reason that may possibly be even stronger than the first one, because President Trump designated the IRGC on April 8th of last year as a globally designated terrorist group. So if you have a terrorist group here and an affiliate over here, by default, you're both a terrorist group. So now we have an actually even stronger reason, and CARE is right in the middle of that. And that is why it's so horrifying to me to see elected members of Congress, up to a quarter of the entire House, writing on official U.S. government stationery letters of commendation and praise to Council on American Islamic Relations for their civil rights work and etc., without apparently taking time to notice that CARE also seeks to undermine virtually every part of our social political structure, even my own former agency, as we talked about in the last show. So that's why it's important. They are still to this day a front group for the Muslim Brotherhood and still linked to Hamas, and now also linked to the IRGC, the Quds Force, and Iran itself. Well, I, I've got to believe, Phil, that members of Congress that aren't openly Islamic, openly anti-Israel, anti-Zionist, anti-Jewish, and we know who those three or four people are, the rest of them, having worked alongside members of the Congress, I can tell you that letters pour in every day, and my guess is they're not doing their due diligence, because if they were, they sure as heck wouldn't be signing. Uh, I can tell viewers of ATP Report, we have the letters, they're on the website, and we'll let you know who signed. If you sign up for our text message service, we'll send it to you. It's not a secret. However, I'll bet you a dollar, you never heard about this in the mainstream media, because it's just too embarrassing to go public with it. And these, are very prominent members of both the House and the Senate. So more to it too, they don't just sign these letters. I mean, that implies that there's an ongoing relationship between 
the members of the house and uh, outreach partners with care, whether it's at the state level and they're back in their home district or right there in DC, which brings up another point, having spent a lot of time in DC, both time in active duty and after, you can literally walk up and down the halls of, of uh, Longworth or Rayburn or Cannon Building where the house offices are and see Nihad Awad and other prominent leaders of care literally walking up and down the halls of Congress. These are Hamas people. So it's not just letters that go out, it's this ongoing interrelationship between care and members of Congress. Having, having heard you say that, it's even more astounding that President Trump has released his deal of the century in the last few days and obviously did it over the objections of care. So they may be in the House walking up and down the aisles of Congress, but they don't have the influence into the Oval Office or that deal of the century would never have been released. Well, that's a bright spot. And by the way, the squad did their duty. They came out and condemned the deal. And of course, at least Rashida Talib and Ilhan Omar have spoke, spoken at care events multiple times. So there's your oh, yeah. connection right there. So they have their mouthpieces that make public statements. They don't even have to come forward themselves. They can get other people to do it, meaning literally members of Congress. So talk to me about um, someone I've done shows with over the years. Uh, former advisor to the president, Sebastian Gorga, Gorka, talked about it when he left the White House. This was really sad news that you had mentioned to me, that Gorka says there's forces within the White House staff that don't want radical Islam mentioned, that don't want Islamic terrorism mentioned. Can you speak to that a minute? Yes, that's been going on for 10, 15 years now. Uh, remember, you may recall the government memo was referred to as Words Matter. That came out years and years ago, and it was uh, an ad admonition. Of course, it wasn't official policy, but those that work in the government know that when they put out a memo like that, it will become by default official policy that we shouldn't say those kind of words. And that's where the cascade started and that led to what you've heard of as the great purge which started in 2009 and then really took off in 2011 and 12 and then when people like myself began to be investigated and or when the state department and my former agency literally went in and pushed buttons on the computer to destroy classified information it's all part of a continuum and it's another way of illustrating what we talked about earlier, that um, President Trump probably doesn't even realize that right under his nose, practically, there are personnel in the structure of the government at very high levels who are adamantly opposed, like they seem to be so much in, in Middle East policy to identifying the nature of the threat and made it literally impossible for law enforcement officers like myself to do our job because they insisted that we had to work on probable cause level. In other words, we can't assume that anybody's a terrorist. They basically have to come up and hand you a letter that says, I'm a terrorist. That's what probable cause is. And that if you ask them questions about their associations, even if you ask them, oh, by the way, I see you're a member of CARE, that they would file a grievance and our own government, our own management structure would back up care instead of us. So that's been going on a long time. And what Sebastian Gorka said is just another vivid illustration of what's been going on for years and years in now inside the structure of the government. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report today. And a special thanks to our esteemed colleague and contributor, Phil Haney. Remember to send us your questions. If your question is read on the air in a future ATP report, we're going to send you a special gift. And for those of you that have not yet subscribed to our text message service, 
send the word truth, T R U T H, to 88202. You will be subscribed. You'll get all of our videos for free on your cell phone. We never charge you. You don't have to do anything at all to get it done. Just send the message. Again, for ATP Report, thanks for joining us today. I'm Barry Newsbaum.